Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And yeah, I'm back in Belarus, streaming from uh, the dungeon, so to say. It's it's actually quite pleasant in here. I'm in the boiler room, and it's nice and toasty, even though it's absolutely freezing cold outside in the the early January of 2022. And today, I'm not going to let the World of Tanks content dwindle just because I'm away and meant to be on holiday, right? And today, I'm going to be playing in my second most played tank of all time. It is the Bat Chantillon 25T. Now, a lot of people always get a bit confused when I talk about the Bat being my second most played tank, when you also know that my M48A5 pattern is my most played vehicle. The comment, a lot of people think that I just played thousands and thousands and thousands of games in it. Uh, I haven't really played more than a thousand games in any tank. I'm the kind of variety gamer. Sounds weird, because obviously my channel is completely focused on World of Tanks, more or less. I do play a wide variety of games outside of uh, YouTube and a lot of people who tune in on Twitch will be able to see the kind of variety that I played, especially with the lockdown. But the Bat Chat is one of those tanks that for me is just ultra special and I used to play it constantly. Why? Because you can do stuff like this. How about get into a position where you think you're going to be able to isolate a tank and then ambush them and then go to town. And with 1,950 average damage in the magazine, I should be able to take them out in a single salvo. Ah, oh dear. Looks like the penultimate shot there, which only rolled for 318, was actually a little bit of a curse for me. And it prevented me, with that abysmal roll out of 390, from finishing off the check heavy in a single magazine. 50% of the time, or just over, he would have died. And that is the power of the Bat Chap. Sure, I took some damage for it. I took, on average, 880 damage. But as long as I put in every single shell against an autoloader like that, I should be able to shut them down. And that is the power of this tank. Assassination. It is why this vehicle is just so awesome. And right up until recently, I also think that it was a great scout as well. Um, don't get me wrong, uh, probably the Bat Chat in, is in as good of a scouting position as ever before. With now two slots on this vehicle, you can get yourself a vision slot, which was previously only available for the light tanks. And that will allow you to use a commander's vision system in this vehicle if you're so inclined. Or if you're an absolute crazy lad, you could even put uh, an exhaust system in there and pump up the camera rating of this thing, probably to about the 45% mark, which is very decent indeed. And I'm talking about the on-move camera rating for that value there. This vehicle, now that you can actually put a Commander's Vision system in the second slot, and you'd have seen as I was loading into the battle that I might have been toying around with the equipment that I was going to choose, but I ended up taking the combat setup, which I'll talk more about in a second. But now that you can have like a vision setup on this vehicle as well, it allows you to be that kind of scout replacement for maps like Prokhorovka or Malinovka, or even any other time when you think that you need a scout. But unlike scouts in the game, they can't do what we did to the TNH VZ-51, right? And they're definitely not going to be able to uh, pull out the kind of damage that you're going to see that we're going to hit in this game. In the first three minutes, we're up to 3,000. This vehicle, never really famous for its damage per minute, which is just shy of 2,300 before you start to pump it up with things like vents, you start to pump it up with um, Brothers in Arms. Maybe even if you're filthy and you like to use a premium consumable on your tanks like I do to be able to pump up the DPM by an additional 5%. The Bat Chat is not like the TVP, it's not like the Progetto, it's not one of those kind of tanks which can be a little bit wild and get away with its armor like on the Progetto, or wild with its unload speed on the TVP. If you want to be the god tier damage dealing tank, then the Bat Chat is not the vehicle for you. Apart from in a one versus one situation where you can have that full, about 12 and a half seconds to be able to dump out an entire magazine and then accept no substitutes, the Bat Chat is still the best tank in the game for that. With regards to its complete flexibility, you can have tanks go in like the VZ-55, you can have tier 9 vehicles like we shut down early on in this game, the TNH VZ-51, but none of them can compete with the all-in assassination appeal of the French medium. So I get spotted making my way up into position, and I didn't think it was the Leopard. I think there's probably some sneaky tank destroyer over towards the east. I can't quite tell what was last spotted there, because he's on right on the edge of the map. And so while we can see the icon indicator of where they were last spotted, we can't quite see the name 
tank there. I guess what I could do is I could mouse over the enemy vehicles and I could see which ones are spotted. Currently, you can't actually mouse over the ones that are, are hidden and be able to see that there. So that's a bit of a downside. So I put one round into the leopard. I expect to get spotted. My sixth sense doesn't go off. And so I think, ah, well, why not? You know, how about I just continue to dump my mag in? And I was kind of hoping to high roll there to try and save some of the ammunition that I have. But all's well that ends well. And I have five more APCR rounds left in this tank up at the 4,300 that we have managed to deal. So this game is still neck and neck with regards to hit points, although we are up by three tanks and just having more guns in the game is a tremendous advantage in itself and oh dear with EBRs driving around like that we're not going to have so many guns in the game for very much longer but luckily the STRV shuts down the Emil, the Gorilla shuts down the WTF Panzer 4 on the enemy team but the A Phase 1 strikes back by shutting down our tier 10 tank destroyer in the form of the UDES 1516. All right so bat chat at this stage of the game where do I need to go? Well, it's really dangerous. Trying to attack the southern part of this map on steps is crazy hard. All it takes is an FV shell or a T-30 shell, a slight high roll, and I'm going to be shut down. But what I want to show you here is this gun handling build on the bat chat. You'll see that we're pretty smooth with our movements. We manage to lock in our shots even on the move. And that's because I am packing vertical stabilizers and a rotation mechanism on this tank. One of the worst things about the bat chat is the blue, both after firing, which is a value of 4, and also 0.17 when moving, 0.17 when turning the hull, and 0.16 when turning the turret. And so by using vertical stabilizers and a rotation device on this vehicle, you can get like 40% reduced dispersion. And that is absolutely outrageous. That means now that we kind of have the gun handling of more of a Soviet medium tank or a Soviet light tank at tier 10. And because, of course, all autoloaders can't use gun rammers, there's not really too much pressure on your slots if you want to go for a damage-dealing, combat, gun-handling setup. You will have to make sacrifices if you want to try and pump up the view range of the vehicle by either using coated optics or a commanded vision system. And a lot of people might also like, instead of using the rotation device on this vehicle, to pump up the accuracy of the tank, because it is 0.38, and that's not great. And as I discovered with my Object 703 version 2, increasing the accuracy of inaccurate autoloaders feels oh so darn good on the tank. And the Bat Chat is one of those vehicles which is not renowned for its accuracy. I'd say the problem with the Bat Chat is that if you don't take a rotation mechanism on this vehicle, then its traverse speed feels rather lackluster. And so I almost feel by using the rotation mechanism on this tank and either putting it in a in a slot, if you can, does it work in a mobility slot? It will do. Or alternatively using a bounty one like I'm using on this vehicle. And that will just give you traverse speeds that make the vehicle feel more like the light tank that sometimes it wants to play. And just like that, in the eight minutes that this game has been running we've dealt 7445 damage that we've seen and maybe a little bit extra for good measure in the post-game stats and oh, every time i see a game go like this which let's be honest this isn't always the average bat chat game oh, there's just absolutely no comparison in world of tanks for how the Bat Chatillon can make you feel. So now we're having to assault on Ghost Town. And when I get onto Ghost Town and I'm having to attack in a vehicle like this, I kind of wince a little bit. This is not the kind of tank to be able to engage your opponents at a decent distance. It's not the kind of tank to have to trade when you come around the corner and fire one shot and then reload. For that purpose, this tank is horrible. You'd be far better in a Progetto or a TVP if you want to play in that way. And what this game is going to be all about is actually trying to manage to break the enemy's defensive line all along the seven, either through the south or through the north, and then hopefully being able to take one of the corners and then be able to spot out for my team or just be able to unleash some of that bat chat passion. All right, so immediately we managed to shut down the charioteer at the start of the game, and I'm going to go for a cheeky reload. And I'm thinking, what shall I do? Shall I really try and snipe in a tank that's not really meant to be a sniper, but is also fairly good? At least compared to the light tanks, right? You get that full-blooded 259 millimeters of APCR penetration and 330, sorry, 330 millimeters of high explosive anti-tank penetration that can be very nice for dealing with heavy tanks on the enemy team. 
So right now, again, I just made a decision. Why would I ever want to just sit up there and have this, where I'm just sniping at a Progetto? It's never going to go well for me. So instead I decide to take the fight to the enemy team. Then unfortunately, there's a Skoda. I'm dodging to the left, dodging to the right. I need to focus the Progetto down first. The Skoda's fired one, he fires two. And then is the Skoda going to have a third shell in this scenario? Possibly, maybe, maybe not. Maybe the Skoda's already fired it. Maybe the Skoda missed it. Well, I tell you what, mate. What a crying shame that you've wasted your shells and the bat chat still has some left in the tank and off. That is just the bat chat in a nutshell. No other tank can really just dive in as quickly as this vehicle and have a magazine that's big enough to be able to shut down the Progetto and then also to deliver four subsequent shots to the Skoda T-50 with enough ammunition to be able to take out the entirety of a tier 9 medium after having finished off a tier 8. Oh, for those purposes, the Bat Chat is just absolutely god tier. So in this scenario, I've just achieved what I wanted to do. Sure, I took a risk, but I feel like when you're playing the assault maps, if you're going to take a risk, you have to do it early. You only have 10 minutes to win. And we've already used up 30% of the time that we have to be able to win on Ghost Town. And so by taking the risk early, I mean, sometimes it's going to mean that I, I, I go back into the garage fairly quickly. But also, you know, most of the time, or, or you're going to be able to make the playthrough, or at least you're going to have a significant enough impact to be able to deal with them. And this is where I absolutely hate this build on the bat chat. We only managed to put in two out of five against the E3 and also the Polish heavy tank on the enemy team. And that is just where the bat chat is absolutely awful. And I can totally understand why people would want to be using the, uh, the aiming device on this vehicle to improve its 0.38 accuracy. And with field mods, you could kind of actually turn the bat chat into a sniper. But I would question why are you even playing the bat chat if you want to be a bit of a sniper? I've always thought this thing is more of an all-in kind of go up alongside or go up behind a, an opponent or even just try to make their way into a nest of pigs and see if you can manage to handle multiple artillery on the enemy team. So we shut down the GW Tiger P. I don't even believe I get spotted in that scenario. And how weird is this? Just look at the map right now. We've managed to breach our way through one of the flanks. And now we have our opponents almost in a complete crossfire, right? We've got them surrounded. This is meant to be a map where your opponents prevent you from going from west to east. Well, because we went from west to east almost immediately in this game, now we can attack from the east. And this game is just at our fingertips. It's like uh, the world is our oyster in this, in this scenario here. And so now I can push along the southern flank with only four shells, though. So I've got to still be a little bit careful, especially if there's going to be a tank destroyer at the back here. And uh oh, dear, who am I going to go for? Well, clearly the WTL fans are for. I'm not going to go for the uh, M5355. Please high roll. Oh, somebody help me out. But, oh, dear, he ammo rocked me. I really wish the other player had finished them off because now I have this M5355 to deal with. And I'm reloading a single APCR round right now. When am I going to realize that's a misplay? Okay, good. Now I've double tapped the two key because I've run out of APCR rounds having done 5,000 damage this game and now I'm going to have to fire high explosive anti-tank rounds and oh god is the artillery going to be able to get us? <laughs> I'm happy about that one. I am still going to stay in it hopefully for long enough to be able to reload again. The Bat Chat, one of those tanks with not the best DPM and a very big magazine which after you've had all of that fun delivering it, taking out the entirety of tanks then you've got to regenerate a little bit, right? And then hopefully we're going to regenerate in time to be able to shut down this M5355. And maybe we can even get ourselves a Pascucci medal or a Top Gun. Or both, I guess, in a single shot. The artillery on my team misses. I'm wondering, shall I go for the Udez or shall I go for the artillery? And look, I actually go for the Udez in this scenario. Oh gosh, no, no, not like this. Are we actually not going to get a Top Gun in this game? First round goes in, second round goes so high. And I was cursing my luck at this stage, right? We had Fortune in close quarters combat against the uh, the Skoda and the Progetto early on in the game, but now we've got this horrible, awkward scenario. But I've managed to re-stealth. I actually get spotted. That Liberté's view range is pretty good and my camera rating is not the best. And we only put in 
I think that was two out of five heat rounds there. Oh, we don't even get a kill in that scenario for an entire magazine. But luckily for me, 5,700 damage ain't bad, right? In the, the first six and a half minutes of this round. And we just got to time our attacks here, right? We've got to try and consider, are we going to be able to deal with those two tanks in the dip? Or shall we make our way into the town? I was thinking that maybe the Object 268 version 4 was going to be able to deal with them before I managed to reload. Or maybe I can even get a bit of a crossfire here. Or maybe my opportunity is instead to go and try and feast on the hit points in the town. However, when we look at the top of the screen, there's not too many hit points to be able to feast on. So here we go, artillery. I've got you now. Give me that Top Gun and Pascucci's. How about now? Yeah, finally. I guess it was like fourth or fifth time lucky in that scenario, right? Oh, well. And spoilers, in this scenario, while well, we're going to drive around and look real cool because we're playing in the back chat. We don't quite manage to get there in time. We don't get all of that, that juicy E3. Nevertheless, once again, another game. And both of these happened on the same day in December, which made me remember why I have played so many games in this tank. And it is the second most played vehicle on my account because no other tank can give you the feeling of that just all in bat chat auto loader gameplay and while they can put in tanks like the tvp which may have better burst damage better gun depression better dpm kind of i'd feel as well better gun handling well they can put in things like the progetto 65 which has a decent enough hull armor and has an auto reloader so it doesn't have to worry about the bat chat problems of having to reload for 30 40 seconds to be able to reload to try and stop that artillery from getting you from behind but it still has this absolute amazing magical pizzazz and i think the main testament to the strength of the bat chat is it's still all of these years that have passed since it first went into the game i believe in 2011 it was the first autoloader along with the amx 50b but it hasn't really been buffed in all of that time and stats that last usually are some of the best as well. So not quite an ace tanker for our first game on steps. For 1,158 base experience points, we dealt 7,855 damage, and I guess we just didn't quite manage to steal enough kills to be able to get that ace tanker. A small amount of profit with a premium account. We would have lost some without. And for our troubles, we get a Confederate and a high caliber medal. In our next game, this was an ace tanker for the 1,259, I guess because... We were probably spotting for ourselves a little bit more and getting a few extra kills. We get a Pascucci's medal for finally finishing off that M5355 and a high caliber for the 5,792 damage that we dealt, in addition to the top gun for the six kills. And again, a small amount of profit. The Bat Chat is not a profitable tank. It doesn't really have enough ammunition. And I quite often in these big carry games start to run low towards the end of it. And I have to fire those high explosive anti-tank rounds that you want to use sometimes situationally instead of having to. So all in all, the Bat Chat, for some reason, still completely in the middle of the pack with regards to performance, even with new vehicles going in, some which have been nerfed while the Bat Chat has been not, and are now performing worse than the original autoloader. And trust me, if you haven't had an opportunity to be able to play a Bat Chat, well, I'm not saying to race to it to be able to get it because I'm not going to pretend it's the most competitive vehicle inside World of Tanks. If you know what you're doing and you're in control of your autoloaders, nothing else feels like this. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was it for today. Really hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, make sure you give the video a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And if you're watching this video as it's released on Sunday, it's time for the World of Tanks Tech Tree Showcase live right now on twitch.tv forward slash quickie baby. And this week, I will be playing up towards the Object 268 version 4 because, of course, it's top of the tree. So if you ever wanted to see me play all of the heavily armored Soviet tank destroyers and pick up a few tips and tricks for them, yeah, come swing by right now and I'll show you the entire line. So really looking forward to seeing you all live right now on twitch.tv forward slash quickie baby. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.